Hi everyone, my name is Natasha of Love's Cure Ministries. Thank you for joining me today for another video. Today in this podcast, we'll be discussing understanding wisdom. I have a few scriptures to go over with you, so let's get started. In Job chapter 12, verse 12, it says, Is not wisdom found among the aged? Does not long life bring understanding? In Psalm 37 and 30, it says, The mouths of the righteous utter wisdom, and their tongues speak what is just. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. There are so many verses regarding wisdom. We can see from different parables from our Messiah. We can see from different uh, circumstances and encounters and uh, trials and tribulations that even the prophets went through. There was an underlining lesson of wisdom. And if we are wise in our modern times, those who are followers of Yeshua, you will take heed to those stories. You will take heed to the message and the word of the Lord. You will take heed to the lessons learned by those who love our God, because that shows you an example of the wisdom that we should also have in our modern times. Now, many of you, just as me and my family are uh, enduring this time, there's lockdowns and curfews and lots of chaos and panic. And you'll see that more because there are too many people that are living without the wisdom of God. There are too many people living without the peace and joy of our Yeshua. For all the times that those who were bold enough to speak were out on the street corners and proclaiming the word of God, for all of those who, no matter where you are and what you do for a living, when you have shared the Christ with those and you've been rejected and the word of knowledge and wisdom uh, being dismissed numerous times, the word of God being taken for a joke, now is the time that I know there are few that see that if they had just listened, even for just one more minute, maybe they would have gotten something in their spirit, a seed dropped in their spirit that could have grown into something wonderful. Now, I just read to you that wisdom and knowledge is despised by fools. And that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. This is where your resourcefulness will come from. This is where your uh, sustainability will come from. Even when you don't have the necessary financial resources to go out and to hoard, to feed a panic that is fueled by the chaos and the absent um, relationship of the Lord with the people in our society, you will still be able to be sustained. Why? Because of your faithfulness to the Lord, because of your obedience to the Lord, because of your love for God. He will not only sustain you, he will supply you with all of your needs. He will give you the wisdom to be resourceful. That if you're not able to afford every bit of supplies that may be in the stores, the resourcefulness from the wisdom that he has given you through the spirit will allow you to shift and move in such a way that you will have what you need. How many times have you gone without? How many times without a mass lockdown, a mass uh, confinement, if you will? 
because of unfortunately what is happening. How many times just in everyday life when you didn't have it, can you think back of how God sustained you and brought you through that? The fact that you woke up this morning is a testament to the fact that God is more wise than we ever could be. And he shares his wisdom with us. It's one of his gifts to us. It's one of the fruits of loving him. When he gives his strength for us to endure. Because we are weak without him. This is all wisdom. To know that we don't have to put the burden on our back. That we can hand it over to the Lord. And he will give us his burden. Which is light and easy. How would I know this if it were not for his spirit? How would I know this if I did not first fear the Lord? For it is the beginning of knowledge. He brings you into the knowledge of him. And makes you wise. Which allows every area of your life to be sustained. Even when you don't have the financial resources to pull through. He allows you through him our victory to endure it. When you think back to all of the times where you've had to endure hardship or trials and tribulations in your life or grieving periods and he has woken you up this morning and he has given you a joy and a peace in your heart that is a wisdom a joy a peace a love that can only come from the father and the son he gives us wisdom to know that Unfortunately, there are so many people out here that are struggling in so many different areas of their lives and don't have the wisdom to know him, that he will ease their burdens and cares. And so now that we have what everyone is saying is a pandemic and structures that are built on sand are being broken down, Notice if you look around at the people of God, they are standing upon the rock. The rock of wisdom, the rock of God, our foundation, our cornerstone. That when our flesh wants to feed in to all that the media has to say and all that people have to say, you will remember the wisdom and instruction of God. And use the knowledge that he has given you to know that we must bring our flesh back into subjection to the Holy Spirit. We got to reel it back in. And we have to ground ourselves and set ourselves upon that rock and not upon the sand. As I read earlier from Psalm 37 and 30, the mouths of the righteous utter wisdom and their tongues speak what is just. Through wisdom, we know that what is just is the word of God. That we are going to utter wisdom and not regurgitate the same information and the same knowledge of man that comes from man. There are too many people that will take the word of someone that they don't even know. And even those that they do know, they don't research anything. And they will take that information and run with it and make decisions that influence their lives and have impact on their lives based on that information given from someone that was never researched in the first place. These things are foolish. They are unwise. And we have to take heed to the instruction of God because this is what is going to steer us and allow us to know what to do in times of need and despondency. There was a scripture that I read earlier from Job chapter 12, verse 12. 
Is not wisdom found among the aged? Does not long life bring understanding? Well, we know this to be true throughout the word of God, but not only does the word show us spiritually how true this is, but in our daily living, we see that even those who are in their older age have some form of understanding. And so here we see the word of God holds true once again, not just through prophecy, but in our daily living, we see that for most people that are in their older age, they can give you some form of knowledge and understanding. Why? Because life repeats itself. So God not only shows us that obviously wisdom comes from him, true wisdom comes from him. He will allow you even in a young age to be able to navigate through life and have a strong foundation because he is the one that gives the wisdom. But it also shows that we can learn something from the generations that have come before us. This is why the world feels that it's such a need to have history books. This is why when you pick up any book that you have to study in school, there is some form of history to it, whether it's mathematics, whether it's language arts, whether it's science, history, and geography, whatever study tool they have. As a matter of fact, whatever facet of learning there is whatever area that you are learning in there is always a form of history attached to it why because that history brings understanding it brings a wisdom and knowledge that you would not otherwise have and in order to go forward you need to know what came before you you have to understand the foundation of what it is you're learning so that when you go out to move forward and be productive in that area. You know what's already been done, what has worked, what hasn't worked. And that wisdom will allow you to be resourceful in that area so that you can continue on to be creative and make something happen, make something new. Now that may be all fine and good in, in the areas of study that turn into careers or help you to just uh, be more productive and forward moving in your normal daily life. But praise God, the only thing at the end of the day that's going to be able to not only save your life, but save your soul is the wisdom of Jesus Christ. Our Messiah is the way and without that wisdom and knowledge, you can have all of the success in the world. You can have all of the false sustainability in this world that allows you to feel comfortable for a moment. But what is happening now, this pandemic that is happening now is an example and it is a warning, just like the birds that fall out of the sky for no reason. Well, at least that's what a lot of people think. There's no reason why the birds of the air would fall out of the sky and just die for no reason. Well, the followers of Christ know why. Because the wisdom have been given to us through the Holy Spirit, confirmed through the word of God, to know that these things will happen in the end times. We know that in the last days, there will be plagues, there will be wars and rumors of wars. People will turn against one another. The Leviathan spirit is running rampant and, you know, we'll talk about that in more detail in a future podcast. There's so much information I just, I want to share, but this is the wonderful thing about the word of God. And this is the wonderful thing about his Holy Spirit is that he is not only the comforter, but the teacher. And if you just spend time with him and have that relationship with him. There is so much that is downloaded into your heart and mind, into your soul. It almost seems like it's too much, but it's just never enough. And without any uh, burden at all, without any 
forcing or striving at all, you just understand. Because this is the grace of God. If you have the wisdom of God through first loving him and fearing him, you will have the wisdom and understanding to know that you have to show that love. You have to do more than talk about the faith that you say you have. You have to work and walk it out. Because this is the fruit. This is the sign of being a child of the living God. Wisdom shows you that we have to be living testimonies. How else can we be a living testimony of the will and word of God? How can we show that the Holy Spirit is true? We have to work and walk out that faith and that salvation that has been gifted to us. We have to be a sign of Yeshua, that he is real, true, and living. But we can't do that if we choose to not utilize the wisdom which was given to us, the same wisdom and spirit that gives us an inclination to stand on top the mountains, stand atop the rooftops, and shout to the hills, shout out to the people amplify the spiritual voice in you so that those who are hurting those who are needing those who are wanting those who just yearn to understand those who are yearning for the confirmation can hear and know that our god is true there are too many people that want to debate the gospel there are too many people that can't wait to sit and feel like a Bible scholar for a few minutes while they sit and debate the word of God. You can't debate one plus one. You know it equals two, right? That is the truth. One plus one will always equal two. You don't debate that. That's just what it is. And that's just the end of the discussion on that. And so why then will you not take heed to the wisdom that tells you the Bible is truth. The word of God is living truth. The prophecies of the Lord is a confirmation that he is real and true. How can that be debated? This is not an extracurricular activity. This is life and this is a battle. It is a war for your mind and a war for your soul. And until the people have wisdom to understand that it's bigger than what you see, you will never understand that there is a spiritual wisdom that comes from the Father that is ready to save your life. So many people think that when they receive the gift of Yeshua, which is the gift of salvation, that's the end of the story. And you go on living your life until you go to heaven and you dwell with the Father and Son. Furthermore, people just leave the Father completely out of it. They just focus on Jesus to the point where you can actually find Bibles that only have the New Testament. And they think this is good. That's not good. That's not good when you leave out the foundation of Torah that confirms and aligns with the New Testament, the Septuagint. The Father and Son are one. How are you gonna divide the word? Wisdom is the only thing that can explain why it is someone would understand that and have that knowledge. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and truth is the one that inclines us to understand and know that. That you can't leave the Father out of it. You can't leave the Son out of it. The Father and Son are one. So shall the people of God be one. People walk around and they think it's acceptable to have all these denominations but because there's a common thread of loving the Lord or believing in Jesus Christ 
they feel like they can have separate understandings and separate practices and because everyone takes a tithe and they all agree on that and they will all attend their Sunday service and they all agree on that that it's all good but the wisdom of God tells you that we should follow the example of our Messiah we should follow his example of how he lived on this earth when he came down from his throne for us his inheritance how his disciples had to come together and be of one mind when the people of God gathered and they were all one and lived in one accord they didn't have separate denominations they didn't have separate understandings they didn't say that's okay because at the end of the day we all believe that God is real they had one mind and were a force of one accord and stood on the foundation that is the rock and cornerstone of our God and King they didn't separate they had a love respect and they feared in more ways than one the all-consuming fire of Ie Asher Ie, the Father who has the power and the wrath to destroy sin. They have a love and respect and fear for the King who has been given all authority to make a righteous judgment upon each and every one of us and the lives we have lived. Yeshua said, my Father is working and therefore I am working also. And forgive me for my loose uh, paraphrasing, but that's what he said, my father is working and so am I, I'm working too. So if Yeshua is setting the example, that is a form of wisdom that we should take heed to, that we also should be working. The field is plentiful, but the workers, Key word, the workers are few. Why? Because there are too many that lack wisdom. And there are some that have the wisdom, but don't have the faith to be bold. God bless those who are bold enough to go out and be an example and an inspiration to those who want to step out on that faith. Those that go out and show how to do this thing, how to work and walk it out, what it looks like, what, what do you encounter? This helps build up the confidence. This helps the preparation mentally and spiritually to see the Holy Spirit at work. Those who are wise will not kick people's back in for not doing what they do, but instead build them up and encourage them speak life over them speak the word of god over them be an example show them the character of the kingdom of god so that when they step out they know they're stepping out with one mind and of one accord with the people of god with their fellow saints in christ the wisdom of god also tells us that we are no longer sinners the wisdom of God tells us that we are saints, that we have been washed clean, that we are no longer what we used to be, that the old things have passed away and we are a new man in Yeshua. Wisdom tells us that every day we get up, that we have breath in our body, that the Lord did not choose to take us unto him in our sleep, that he allowed us to wake up another day and see our loved ones, that that's one more day of grace that we have to be a good representative of the kingdom, to not take every day for granted, because guess what? There were too many times where I've seen the people of God sharing the love of Christ, and it's been taken for granted, and it's been taken as a joke, and there are too many people who claim that they believe in Yeshua and that they have faith and they don't walk it out or work it out. They think that they can just be saved by grace. Just like you cannot live by bread alone, you will not be saved by grace alone. Only wisdom can 
show you that. Only wisdom can show you that there is no way you can be washed clean in the blood of Yeshua and then turn around and live the life of a sinner and think that you will be able to be called holy and live in the midst of our God. The Father does not tolerate sin and neither does Yeshua. We see that our God is a righteous judge. We know that the judges in our world, in our physical realm, a lot of them are not righteous judges, are they? A lot of them do not decide upon what is right or wrong, but they decide your fate based on what you can prove. And we need to praise and honor the Father and the King, His Son, because our God is fair, because He is forgiving, because He has mercy, because although we may have lived a life that was not pleasing unto Him, He allowed us a way to be righteous in His sight with the indwelling of His Holy Spirit by being guided by His Son unto Him. We are only worthy, we are only righteous, we are only holy because of Yeshua. And until we grab hold of the wisdom that God has given us, we will never grab hold of that truth. Wisdom shows us that we must proclaim the truth. But those who are in the world, those who have gone rogue and they've gone down this road of apostasy, will look at that as prideful because they look at the wrong things, because they don't have the wisdom of God, they have the knowledge of man. We proclaim the things of God. We shout it with a loud voice. We sing the song of our God. We celebrate and we honor him. We don't sit there and pretend that it doesn't exist. We don't sit there and cherry pick it. We don't sit there and hide the truth. We proclaim his truth and his wisdom. We display his peace, joy, and love. And that doesn't mean sitting down and allowing somebody to walk all over you and allow someone to uh, make you their emotional and spiritual punching bag. No. And heaven forbid, a physical punching bag. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. The people of God are warriors. The people of God are soldiers of the living Christ. We are ambassadors in Yeshua. When you put on that whole armor of God, when you put on that priestly garment, when God has called us to be kings and priests in the earth, where have you ever seen a king or a priest stomped all over? You don't see it. The world will not show you that because kings and priests in the earth have authority. And if in the earth they can have authority, then how much more will God allow us to have in the earth? Even though we are in the world, we are not of it. We are in a foreign land. And yet and still, our king, our father in heaven, allows us to have the physical, emotional, and mental resources through his spiritual wisdom. We must take heed to the things of God. We must take heed to what is happening around us and understand it is not our duty to convince anyone of the truth. It is our duty it is our birthright to proclaim the good news of the gospel. Those who have a heart of God will hear. Those who truly have the heart of the Lord will see. You can't do anything more than what the Holy Spirit will allow according to God's will. Wisdom will show you that no matter how many times you go out, and you do the work of the Lord, if it is not his will for those to hear and see, that's just what it's gonna be. 
You are there as an example and confirmation and a testimony. You are to show that the living God is real, right, and true. And whatever is going on in the inside of someone else, they will feel that spiritual tugging, that spiritual inclination when they hear the words of God belted out from your soul. And they will know he is real because of what's already going on on the inside. The Holy Spirit is doing the work in the will of God. Whatever will be, will be. Because the Father and the Son have already established and told us what will happen and what will be so. It is our duty to obey the living God. It is our duty to share the gospel. It is our duty to show that you don't just say the words, but you walk out the faith that you claim to have in the living God. Be mindful of how you live. Be mindful of what you say. Be mindful of how you treat others. While you go to church on whatever day you choose to go, and then for the rest of the week, no one could even tell that, that you believe in the Lord at all. You're no different from any random person out in the world. That is unacceptable. And we only know this. We only know what standard we should live by through the wisdom of God. I pray that you will hear the voice of the Lord and you will take heed to his wisdom and knowledge just as the word of God says in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 7 do not be wise in your own eyes fear the Lord and shun evil there are so many scriptures on wisdom I encourage each and every one to allow the Lord to lead you through those passages and in understanding what wisdom truly is Wisdom is crucial, especially in these times, because wisdom is going to allow you to remember the Lord. It's going to allow you to remember the things of God. It's going to help you to be resourceful. It's going to show you what to say to your loved ones, to, to simmer down that panic, to give them the peace of God. When you pray to the Lord, that you will pray a humble prayer that you will come before the throne of God in all humility and pray what the Spirit will allow you to pray according to God's will. And while everyone is stocking up on whatever they can find, and while all of the world is trying to come together to try to figure out how they can contain this thing, the people of the Lord need to be an example of the kingdom of God and show that no matter what happens, no matter what comes our way, that we're gonna stand strong. We're going to be peaceful. We're going to be joyful. We're not going to be fearful. That no matter what we're able to receive as a resource or supply, whether we have it or not, that God gives his people twofold. I encourage you to be an example to the world, to show them the wisdom of God, that we will not be moved. Remember the words of God. Thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Why? Because you are a child of the living God. The wisdom of his spirit will allow you to remember his words and stay faithful and walk faithful. There are many people that live paycheck to paycheck. There are many people that are homeless. There are many people out there that are unfortunately out of work for only God knows how long. And yet and still, there's bills that are coming up in a few weeks that are gonna be due. And some are already behind. But you need to hold on to God. This is the time where you need to rejoice because we knew this time would be coming. And it's been going on for a long time. If you look at what's happening in other countries, 
There have been trials and tribulations going on for a long time. This is just scratching the surface of what is to come. But all of this that is happening, this is a warning. All of the global fires, all of the pandemics, all of the plagues and the locusts, all of the things that are dying around us, people have forgotten God and this is the result. The word of the Lord says, if my people would come to me and pray, I will heal their land. So what is happening now is not the end all be all. If we would remember God, come to him in all humility, come together and pray. But this is the result. And the prophecies of the Lord will hold true and they will come true. Why? Because he knows that no matter what happens, there will be people that will never turn to him. And that is a shame. And so for the mercy of man, we still go out, we still try to speak, we still try to preach, we still try to teach, we still try to live and show the love of the Lord in the hopes that someone will be touched by God. Someone will have a seed of wisdom dropped into their spirit and their eyes and ears will be opened. This is the will of God that none should perish but it is the wickedness and the sinful nature of man that is too prideful to let go of that and humble themselves and come before the living God who created them. They would rather believe that the world was just made out of nothing. And they don't even understand they have a little bit of information about a little bit of an event that caused the existence of life but it was the creator that allowed that to happen. I pray that each and every one will take heed to the word of the Lord. I pray that now more than ever, when things are going to start getting rough, things are going to get even tougher, that you will remember to hold strong and hold fast to the word of the Lord. I pray that you will remember those times where you had nothing and no one I pray that you will remember those times where you went through some type of hardship in your life in whatever way that was, on whatever level that was, and you remember how God delivered you out of that to bring you to right where you are right now. Now for some, you may not be where you want to be, but we must deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow Jesus and he will bring you to the Father. He will show you the way because he is the way. He will never leave you. He will be with you until the end to help you endure. And when you are weak, he will be your strength. Speak life into the life you're living. Speak that wisdom of God. And until next time, bye friends.